Hey, what's going on, everyone? This is Mitch. Getting Monday morning to you all. Hope everyone is doing well out there and having yourselves a fantastic start to your day and week. And I hope everyone had a great weekend. Here to bring you the latest information on what's going to happen weatherwise to kickstart your week. Of course, today is the day of the total eclipse. So we'll speak on the weather for that. I do think we'll have a lot of weather for the South Central U.S., Texas, and a uh, very small section of Oklahoma and Arkansas, even Louisiana. And we know that the path of totality goes right through Texas. So we'll speak on that, talk about the impacts on that. Not really going to do a cloud forecast or anything like that. Um, you know, this is just kind of a now thing at this point. You know, waking up, you kind of got to look in the sky, see what's going on, and kind of gauge it until we get to the path of totality. But we're going to speak on a couple things in regards to that. But a significant severe weather is the big topic for today. Uh, so that'll be obviously a big topic in this video. We'll have that time stamped out for you folks for a separate segment for you guys being impacted by this uh, chance of significant severe weather. And today's kind of just day one. We're going to have another shot at that tomorrow and the next day and most likely for Thursday also. We're going to have a week-long stretch at least Monday through Thursday of a chance of a severe weather. And I do think the tornado threat increases as we get into tomorrow and then Wednesday, we got to see what's going to happen Thursday. So we're going to break it all down for you folks, get very detailed like we always do. So if you guys have not subscribed, certainly consider doing that. Like the video if you like it. And I'll get caught up with all the comments later on this afternoon. Um, typically, I'm not able to answer them on the weekend, so I'll get caught up this afternoon at work. And uh, if you guys got anything I can pray about or pray over, as always, please put those in the comments below. Let's get rocking and rolling. So Middle of the country is pretty quiet. You would think, you know, hey, we're, we're going to be pretty good with this total eclipse. You know, the path goes right through this region. No real rain, but there is clouds. I mean, you got to think. J just because um, it's not raining, there can still be clouds. And I do think there's a lot of clouds starting to bubble up here in Texas. You guys will have to let me know what you're seeing out there. I do think there'll be some openings here and there. Uh, but focusing just on what's falling from the sky, we do have some showers and storms across areas of the Mid-South, kind of the Mississippi Delta region. And then we have some showers going right through where the path of totality is going to go through here in like northeast Ohio, heading right toward Buffalo, western New York. I do think these showers will diminish, kind of lose some steam, but we're dealing with some showers up against the Appalachian Mountains, uh, more widespread heavy rain up here in the north central U.S., the upper Midwest. And we still got this weak spin ongoing with some snow and some rain falling, depending on your location. Western U.S. pretty quiet. We are going to deal with some rain in the Pacific Northwest today, though. The excessive rainfall outlook. Normally, we, we do start off by showing the Storm Prediction Center, but like I said, we're going to have that as an entire segment for you folks, so we'll break that down here in a second. Uh, but we do have a slight risk of flash flooding, at least a 15% risk of uh, flash flood guidance being met within 25 miles in the given location. Uh, so, you know, today's kind of day one of a flash flooding risk also. Tomorrow will most likely be a higher Thread. In fact, we already have a moderate risk up for tomorrow and uh, did not look at day three, but that might be a moderate risk also. But, the, you know, flooding is going to be a big risk, guys. It really is. Um, so we definitely don't need to completely ignore that. We'll speak on that as far as how much rain can fall just over the next 24 hours when we speak on the south central U.S. But uh, speaking on watches, warnings and advisories, you know, things are pretty quiet out there right now. We do have flood watches up for uh, northeast Texas, northern Louisiana, southern Arkansas, and one county in Oklahoma. We'll see if this expands or shrinks. It'll likely expand eastward into Mississippi and Alabama over the next uh, probably 24 hours or so. But let's go on and break down the severe weather threat. So here's a broad look at it. This is the latest information as of around 7 a.m. Eastern Time. They'll have another update probably around 8.30 or something. Uh, so I'll make sure that I do post an update underneath this video. But as of right now, we have that enhanced risk in north Texas. Slight risk includes a, a large chunk of Texas down here to south, southern sections of the state, all the way into the southern counties of Oklahoma, all the way over to southwest um, areas of Arkansas, including northern and northwest Louisiana. Marginal risk extends all the way into the western fringe of Alabama. But let's just go on and take a closer look at this. So this does show towns and cities. Enhanced risk, Wichita Falls, Dallas-Fort Worth area, Abilene, everybody in between. There's going to be a risk of significant hailstorms in this area. Also, tornadoes. Slight risk goes all the way to well south of San Antonio, Austin, Waco, uh, Paris, uh, Shreveport, Leesville, uh, Louisiana, Monroe, Louisiana, Texarkana, at, uh, Ardmore. Uh, so we do have that marginal risk all the way up here in the dark green. So level three out of five risks. This is really driven off hail, but we'll see if we'll have an increased tornado threat in later outlooks. But 
Uh, there's that tornado outlook right here. So in the brown, if you're not familiar with this, this means there's a 5% risk of tornadoes within 25 miles in the given location in the brown area. Green, same thing, but a 2% risk. Okay. Um, wind threat in this yellow area, including all the cities that are in it, uh, there's a 15% risk of winds exceeding a 55 to 60 miles per hour. So damaging winds will be a threat today. But by far the biggest threat I do think for today is hell. So this is the hell outlook. So in the red, we have a 30% chance of hell exceeding one inch in diameter or larger. And then the yellow, you have a 15% risk of that. So what about these black dashes going in between everything? Well, that means you have a chance of significant weather, uh, significant severe weather. In this case, it's hell. So you got a 10% risk. It's its own number, not added on to say this 30% risk, just its own thing. You got a 10% risk of hell exceeding two inch in diameter or larger. So some very large hail is possible and most likely going to happen with these storms, especially and most likely in this red area. It just depends on where these storms form. So let's take a look at the latest HRRR model and what we got. So starting off this morning, already got some moisture bubbling up from the Northwest Gulf of Mexico into Texas and Louisiana. As we start to get to about one to 2 p.m., kind of the path of totality rolling right through this region, not a whole lot of weather ongoing at this moment. Right now, you just got some storms beginning to form, kind of the beginning stages of this kind of two-day event because we are going to have a chance of severe weather for tomorrow also in this area. Uh, but here comes the storms forming well north of Houston, and then they really start to group together. And this is around 7 to 8 p.m. There's two things going on here. You got convection forming out here near Lubbock, uh, here in north um northern sections of Texas, and you got a lot of shower and storm activity right into here. I'm going to include more of Louisiana and Arkansas here in a second, but we got some storms rumbling up here to the Texarkana region. We start to get to about 10 p.m., right? Uh, the sun's already went down, and this is honestly where I think the you know the worst storm action is going to happen, the time frame. See these storms, Abilene right here, Wichita Falls right into here. Nasty couple of storms rolling right through the middle. Now, it could be a little bit further south, could be a little bit further north. You know, you do got a severe weather threat down here, too, but there's not a whole lot of storms forming. But, you know, this is just a, a short-range model guidance. This isn't telling us exactly what's going to happen, just trying to give us an idea. All right, but I do. I am very confident that we're going to get widespread showers and storms in northeast Texas. You know, flooding can quickly become a big threat, and there's going to be some embedded spins, uh, broad rotation, a lot of broad rotation, most likely, with all this convection. I think we'll have a couple tornado warnings off these storms. I really do. You have to watch. But you kind of keep on going. You start to get to two or three o'clock in the morning. You see these little individual cells. These could produce be produ these could be producing some large hail in North Texas. It really could. Uh, a lot of heavy rain falling with these. Just waves after storms, waves after storms. Mary, you know, you certainly are going to have a very stormy second half of these next 24 hours coming up, and then into tomorrow also. And I mean, you take it all the way. I mean, this is like four o'clock in the morning. These are some powerful storms north of the Dallas-Fort Worth area, but they could be right on top of the Dallas-Fort Worth area. Remember, this is an exact science. This is just trying to give us an idea of what's going to happen. And guys, we're waking up tomorrow morning. We're still dealing with these storms. High confidence in these storms right here. Lower confidence in these, but they will likely form later on uh, this evening, most likely, and be producing large hail. Definitely even lower confidence a little bit further south. Will storms even form down here? There's a chance they might not. Now, you look at the updraft felicity swath with this. Remember, just just symbolizes rotation with these storms. Doesn't necessarily mean there's going to be a tornado. Okay. Watch how it starts down here. And then you start to see it come up right here. And then you see two separate areas, right? Rotation with these, all these clusters of storms forming right in here. And you got a couple really distinct signals of rotation with these giant supercells forming up here. And I do think at minimum, at minimum, these supercells up here in North Texas, like watch out Abilene, Abilene to uh, Wichita Falls and surrounding regions, they will have at least at minimum some strong broad rotation. Remember, you need that tight rotation to produce these tornadoes. So um, definitely two solid separate areas for rotating thunderstorms. So please be aware, especially in this area, because these storms will be clustered up really, like really, really clustered up. So if any, if any tornadoes do get going here in this region right here, they're going to be really rain-wrapped. So rainfall between now and the next 24 hours, a couple inches of rain 
uh, is expected, especially uh, the, the the latter half of the next 12 hours. So probably getting into this this afternoon, this evening, into the overnight hours, uh, two one to three inches of rain is possible in northeast Texas, southeast uh, Oklahoma, uh, southwestern areas of Arkansas, and certainly northern Louisiana. But you know, to move a little bit further east, guys, we can't ignore this area. You know, we start to get into around 1 to 2 uh, o'clock this afternoon. Jackson getting hit by some storms, northern Louisiana by some storms. I do think the severity level of these storms will be a little bit lower, but you will certainly be getting some, some most likely some severe, uh, a little bit of a tongue twister there, some severe uh, thunderstorm warnings in this area, most likely. I just, I, I don't think you're going to get, I don't think you're going to get a significant uh, tornado threat in these, these areas, but Certainly, uh, these storms will be producing a lot of heavy rain, frequent lightning, and some small hail is most likely with these. And uh, these will continue to surge northward. Uh, so definitely rainy, storm, stormy times this afternoon, this evening. And these will continue to kind of ride up the Mississippi Valley on both sides uh, of them, up the Mississippi River. And we're getting some powerful storms even up here near Little Rock. You know, this is around midnight tonight. But we do got that slither of rain all the way back here into Alabama. These continue to ride north. It turns into just more of a widespread rain event by the time we're waking up tomorrow morning. It's around 6 o'clock tomorrow morning. Just moderate to heavy rain across the northern half of Louisiana. Well, yes, the northern half of Louisiana also, but I'm going to say Mississippi, Alabama, western Tennessee, all of Arkansas seeing some heavy rain. So definitely waking up to a pollen washer out here for sure um, to kickstart your Tuesday morning. So, you know, looking at the updraft Felicity Swath in this area, um, you know, the signal isn't very high. But there is more of a higher signal, I would say, um, in northern Louisiana. Definitely watch out for a risk of some tornadoes today, really this afternoon, this evening, even into the overnight hours in northern Louisiana. Not so much in Mississippi. I do think the tornado threat really increases in east uh, Texas, Louisiana, even areas of Arkansas tomorrow, and we'll talk about that here in a second. But, of course, rainfall between now and the next 24 hours, um, this is just the beginning. It's still going to be raining in these areas as we're waking up tomorrow morning. Just between now and the next 24 hours, southern Arkansas, anywhere from one to four inches of rain. Same thing with the northern sections, uh, parishes of uh, Louisiana. I always want to call them counties, but they're not. Uh, northern Mississippi, uh, a couple inches of rain, about an inch of rain, uh, half an inch to an inch of rain is possible in northern Alabama, the southern counties of Tennessee, to kick start uh, your Tuesday morning. So. That's a severe weather threat uh, breakdown for that area. Let's break down the rest of the country, and then we'll dive into the severe weather risk for tomorrow. So the rest of the southeast, very quiet. Um, you know, like I said, you know, as we start to get into this evening, some of this rain will become a little bit, will start to scoot a little bit further east. We could get some storms also up here in Kentucky. You see these couple storms forming in Kentucky? Don't ignore these. Bowling Green area, you know, western Tennessee. These storms will had the potential to be strong and severe. So definitely some storms up here, not very widespread, but certainly going to be there. And when waking up tomorrow morning, rain is starting to enter the upstate and western sections of South Carolina, raining in northern Georgia. Uh, some rain starting to spread up the mid-Mississippi Valley and uh, waking up to some just rainy times in Arkansas, northern Louisiana, like we just mentioned. The northeast, dealing with a little bit of rain here in northeast Ohio, northwest uh, PA, in western New York today, but I do think this will kind of fizzle out by the time we get into this afternoon, but you're going to be left with clouds, and we know the path of totality goes right through this region, right into here, okay, so, you know, there's, might be, a, you might get a clearing in Buffalo when the path goes through, um, but we'll have to watch, it's just kind of a now thing, guys, it really is, you just kind of, real-time observations, just look up in the sky, look at the clouds, it's kind of really pointless, that's not pointless, I would say, but you know, it's, it's just happening here in the next few hours. So you, uh, it's just kind of just hoping for the best at this point. But we know that Maine is going to be good. Maine's going to be, uh, you know, area number one to view this eclipse. But I know not everybody can get up to Maine for sure. So, um, but uh, getting into this afternoon, this evening, just some showers, maybe even some storms in northern um, West Virginia, southern Ohio, very possible. Not a big deal at all. Some showers in the mid-Atlantic, very possible this afternoon. Real, really later on this overnight and uh, into tomorrow morning. So not a very active day of weather in the Northeast at all. North Central, I'm sorry, South Central U.S. We've already broke this down, but I will mention, you know, the little bit of snow in the Rockies here. Uh, not a big deal at all. And then some of these storms could get a little bit further north. Might start to flirt with like the Tulsa, Oklahoma City region, but I think most of it will stay pretty south. And we will have... An area to watch out for, and this is getting into tomorrow late morning, 
uh, to watch for this moisture here. It could dump some wet snow in areas of New Mexico. It might even sneak into the western counties of the panhandle of Texas. But I already kind of broke down this area. But the north central U.S., we continue to have this pesky little spin up here. This will bring some showers to especially kind of northern and really northeastern Minnesota, even into the western uh, UP of Michigan, northern Wisconsin. We got some showers back in South Dakota, northern uh, Nebraska, maybe a storm or two here in southern Minnesota, northern Iowa this evening. Could produce some small hill. We finally get this on out of here, but we're still going to be dealing with some rainy conditions as we're waking up for our Tuesday morning in the UP of Michigan. But we'll finally get this on out of here up into Canada and finally stop dealing with that. The western U.S. is a very nice day. We'll finally lose the snow in Wyoming. One last day of snow drifting around in northeast Wyoming. You guys let me know what you've seen up there if you're tuning in from kind of eastern Wyoming. But we'll definitely get some widespread rains up here in north, um, northeast, I'm sorry, northwest Washington State and western Washington State. Uh, some cascade snow is very possible, but uh, just not a very high end system at all just some rain kind of moving into the region uh, temperatures today very nice all the way up into lower michigan 60s and 70s ohio valley nice midwest nice beautiful beautiful temperatures as far as viewing the eclipse we just need the clouds to cooperate the entire mid-south ohio valley deep south southeast you know 70s and 80s a very nice temperatures for sure northeast not even that bad for this time of the year you know 50s uh even some 40s so uh, we look out west here, uh, definitely a pocket of cooler air over the Rockies, but the immediate southwest is pretty nice. Temperatures will, will warm up pretty good. You know, I do think San Diego, L.A., up to San Francisco, Las Vegas, Phoenix, I think you guys will have some pretty uh, pretty nice weather days, that's for sure. So um, let's move forward. Let's look at Tuesday. So we're going to dive really deep into this tonight again um, because some things are going to change uh, probably – Things might change with today's severe weather threat. But for tomorrow, notice it doesn't look much different, except the enhanced risk is now um, in eastern Texas into Louisiana. Okay, so we have an enhanced risk. This is for tomorrow, tomorrow morning through Wednesday morning. All right, level three out of five risk of severe weather, the yellow, level two out of five. Um, but the uh, enhanced risk does include um, Austin. Um, everybody in this area right here, don't pretend to know every single town and city in eastern Texas, but... You know, it does almost get to Lake Charles, goes over to Alexandria, and uh, not quite to Monroe. But this is going to be a risk area for tornadoes, for sure. But there is a slight risk stretching from western uh, Texas um, all the way to southern counties of Arkansas, all the way down to southern uh, Texas. So uh, we do have, once again, in Abilene, Fort, Dallas-Fort Worth area, Shreveport, down San Antonio, Houston, uh, once again, we do have another severe weather risk for tomorrow. What is this driven off of? Well, tornadoes, unfortunately, and, you know, other things too. But you see this area, this is the tornado outlook. This is a 10% risk, a 10% risk of uh, a tornado within 25 miles in a given location. You see the black outline region? That means that there is a 10% risk of a significant tornado, EF2 or higher. So we have a risk of significant tornadoes tomorrow in the jungle of eastern Texas and into Louisiana. So I say the jungle because storm chasers hate to chase in this region right here because uh, you can't see anything. Um, but anyways, we're not worried about that. We're worried about trying to keep people alert. But this is going to be an area. And the concerning thing about this tornado risk tomorrow is that these will be embedded tornadoes. This will probably be a messy storm mode. Rain wrap tornadoes will be a risk here. But uh, the wind outlook, guys, I mean, even this, folks, this is even driving the enhanced risk. I mean, we have a 30% risk of winds exceeding 55 to 60 miles per hour. No hatch risk, no significant, no risk of significant winds. But, I mean, and then in the yellow, I mean, that is a 15% risk of winds exceeding 55 to 60 miles per hour. So we do have a risk of some pretty higher end risk of some uh, damaging winds. And then the hell threat, guys, I mean, huge risk area. Red area, 30% risk of hell exceeding one inch in diameter or larger. And then the yellow, it's 15% risk of that. And then the entire black outline area, a 10% risk of significant hail, two inch in diameter or larger. Tomorrow's going to be a big severe weather day, guys. And, you know, we'll kind of go over this really quick here. And, you know, we look at the HRRR model, what we got. We'll start off tomorrow morning already dealing with a ton of storms. Look at these storms already going. By the time we get into late morning tomorrow, I mean, there's already ongoing storms. Just firing up again. Probably leftover boundaries from today's storms. 
but heavy rain, severe thunderstorms rumbling through this region. Um, probably on the southern edge of these storms, this will be where you have your highest tornado threat right in here, where they can basically kind of take advantage of the environment just south of these storms, really building into the southern flank of these storms. But you keep these going. Look at these storms rumbling into southern Arkansas and northwest Louisiana. And you keep this going. And look at these storms that kind of form later tomorrow evening. These could be produ producing uh, some all severe ha hazards. Large hail with these storms are very possible here in southeast and east central Texas. And then this is as far out as it goes. And I mean, look, I mean, this is like one o'clock in the morning. Look at these powerful storms firing up just south or around the San Antonio region, guys. I mean, so this is just round after round of severe weather going to be oncoming. So, you know, you, you look at the deep south and we can look at this too really quick. And uh, we'll back this up a little bit. And yeah, I mean, these. this is probably tomorrow around 4 p.m. You kind of have these storms kind of training over the same region. And like I said, I would say anybody on the southern flank of these storms runs the higher risk of tornadoes. I do think the higher tornado threat is going to be a little bit further kind of west than Louisiana into east uh, Texas. But certainly uh, could have an ongoing tornado threat also a little bit further east. This looks like a powerful line of storms. Could be producing damaging winds kind of riding uh, the Louisiana-Arkansas state line right going right towards the Mississippi River as we're getting into 8, 9 p.m. tomorrow. And then look at this light really intense looking line of storms this could change around 10 11 p.m tomorrow rumbling through mississippi tomorrow night not tonight tomorrow night and yeah then we got to watch wednesday you know so speaking of wednesday and we'll get de more detailed on that in tonight's video there's already an enhanced risk at day three this is for wednesday folks that enhanced risk shifts a little bit further east now it's including you know Basically, a good chunk of Louisiana, including the southern half of Mississippi and areas of southwest Alabama, slight risk from eastern Texas up into uh, southeastern sections of Arkansas, all the way into the Panhandle, Florida, very small section of southwestern Georgia, includes a good chunk of Alabama. So, you know, pretty much all we know right now is that there's a 30% chance of severe weather. What is this going to be driven off of? I can almost I don't want to guarantee it, but I can almost guarantee you that there's going to be a 10% risk of tornadoes also, kind of like how tomorrow is going to be. But right now, they just have a 30% hatched risk, which means 30% risk of severe weather within 25 miles of the given location in this red area, and then a 10% risk of a significant weather. So, And then, guys, we got Thursday. And, yes, we do need to watch out for Ohio, as uh, this will be a bimodal mode most likely, where a surface flow will be ejecting probably across um, the eastern U.S., you're probably going to have an area of more favorable kinematics in this region and then an area of more favorable thermodynamics in this region. So we'll, we'll get more detailed on this as we get closer. But as of now, we know 15% risk of severe weather here for Thursday and then up here. So we look at the ingredients really quickly here. Um, we'll, we'll take a look at what assimilation of what the Europeans say and the, the radar could look like. And we'll start off kind of Wednesday morning. And uh, we keep this going here. And what I what we do know is this is probably going to be very stormy just waking up Wednesday morning. But um, these storms down here, which they just look like splotches of orange and yellow and, and green, these will probably have embedded tornado threats right here in this region for sure. So this continues, and we start to get into Wednesday afternoon. Um, the tornado threat could shift more so into Louisiana. And then we're going to have a lot of storms overnight, uh, probably Wednesday night, rumbling through the rest of Alabama, Georgia, waking up to probably a line of storms sweeping through Georgia, I would have to guess. And then we're probably going to have another severe weather threat for the eastern Carolinas, I would say, and uh, southeastern Georgia. we got to watch the timing of this convection right in here. And, yes, there will be a severe weather threat, I think, for areas further northeast than North Carolina, maybe even southeast Virginia. we just got to watch the timing of this. And I know my folks in Ohio are thinking, why aren't you showing us? Well, guys, we're just not in a range of short-range model guidance. So there's no point in really showing you this much. This is going to change a million times. Uh, but we are going to dive into you guys, I, I promise you, because you, we do need to, you know, figure that one out too. But, you know, we got multiple multi days of severe weather coming up. Just kind of showing you the kind of concrete ingredients that we have out here. And one thing that we know we do have, dew points, supportive low-level moisture, in place, plenty of moisture. 
pool of dew points uh, above 70 in the upper 60s, if not 70s, right down here. Plenty of moisture in the atmosphere to work with. And then, of course, as we get into Thursday, plenty of moisture in the atmosphere to work with. All the way from, you know, Florida, North Florida, all the way up into probably Southeast Virginia. And then this clears on out and the atmosphere stabilizes. And what about that Cape? We definitely are going to have, you know, fuel in the atmosphere. And we'll have to do this on the fly here. So y'all bear with me. You know, this is looking at Wednesday. How much fuel is going to build? How much this is, this is Cape. So this is the available energy in the atmosphere for these storms to take advantage of. Basically like storm fuel. That's what I call it. And uh, there'll definitely be plenty of fuel as this kind of transitions to a um, high shear, low cape kind of event, meaning higher in kinematics, lower in thermodynamics. Now, where there is thermodynamics, there'll be plenty of it. Uh, it's just I do think the sector kind of, kind of decreases, if you will. Uh, but we'll keep this going. And a lot of fuel in the atmosphere riding right over the Mississippi Valley. Uh, Mississippi River and um, we keep continue to keep this going into Thursday morning uh, of course it being the morning time the energy kind of dissipates somewhat and then we start to get into Thursday afternoon energy tries to rebuild but this is really turning into a high-end kinematic uh, kind of uh, more more wind shear than 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 thermodynamics if you will guys so uh, definitely a lot of fuel down here in Texas, but you might be missing. There I go calling Florida, Texas again. Down here in Florida, <laughs> but you might be, you know, missing, I would say, the forcing needing, needed for storms. Definitely probably going to get some storms down here, but uh, missing the overlapping of ingredients for significant severe weather, well, I should say. And then you look at the kinematics. This is the wind flow aloft and the mid-levels, and certainly plenty of a kinematic flow, mid-level flow that's going to support lift. Uh, damaging winds and tornadoes and here it is really increasing in Louisiana and areas of Mississippi you got a 70 60 to 70 mid-level jet kind of rumbling through the region this begins to increase even more as we're getting into Thursday morning and then by the time we're in the Thursday afternoon we got this you know 80 knot mid-level jet rumbling right through the southeast with probably an associated very strong low-level jet so yeah so there's a lot coming up, guys, a long stretch of severe weather. So that's all I got. Thank you all for tuning in. Sorry for the little hiccups here and there. Um, a little bit congested this morning, so I feel like I can barely talk. Uh, but uh, anyways, God bless all y'all. Y'all stay safe. Enjoy the eclipse. I hope that it's clear in your area. It's definitely well worth um, any kind of travel that you did, the drive. And I was fortunate enough to be not have to drive anywhere. I was in the path of totality in South Carolina in 2017. I tried to downplay the heck out of this thing. I thought it was overhyped, and it certainly was not. It was awesome, and I'll never forget it. So you guys enjoy it if, you'll get, if you're fortunate enough to see it. God bless all y'all, and have a wonderful Monday.